Welcome back for another OG Show Live. Mr. Randall, how you doing? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real Down. Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing for News. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to, once again, the Bass Cag and Beers. Brother! This is the final cast. Another segment of uh, Chasing the Tide, your saltwater connection on the pallet. Welcome back, everyone. Another episode of Feather and Fur, your host. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal. Hey, welcome back to Off the Water. This is Q here with Adventures of Outdoor Woman Podcast. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. We're brought to you by... Pelican built tough for all situations. Go to pelican.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake for all your lodging, kayaking. Go to eastport.info. Yak Gadget for all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs. Go to yakgadget.com. Listening to the final cast on the Paddle and Finn Podcast Network, I'm Brad. And with me tonight, the Mandalorian. Oh, snap. What's up, dude? <laughs> That's so cool, man. The helmet's awesome. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, if you're uh, if you're on the podcast uh, listening, check that out on YouTube. Matt has a cool little uh, Mandalorian helmet that he got from <laughs> Disney. I did. It was Disney expensive, but it's awesome. Yeah. But first, this segment's brought to you by Dark Horse Tackle. They uh, find the coolest baits around the country, made in the USA, and uh, put them in a box, and uh, you subscribe to it. So if you want to get in this box, use Paddle 20 to get 20% off your first uh, monthly subscription to that box. It's awesome. So. Oh yeah. yeah, it's 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 great. It's a company local to the Ohio area, but they get hand painted baits from all over the country. Um, small tackle companies, you know, small businesses. They really support the little guy, which is awesome. Uh, this last month, I don't have the box down here with me. I actually took it to Florida with me, but it had uh, what tubes, tube jigs, uh, spinner jigs, bait, nest jig, spinner bait. I mean, it had a ton of stuff, and it's not like your big retail or big retail, but big company subscription boxes. You're getting good baits that you can use that aren't sample packs. And they're actually good quality. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, man, how was your uh, vacation? It was good. Um, so we had good weather all week. Uh, sadly, I didn't get a chance to fish at all. Uh, I tried to fish somewhere, but it was on Disney property. And I had one of Mickey's minions tell me I can't fish anymore. So I, I, I'll take it back. I got one cast, uh, and they were on me like flies on poo. It was terrible because <laughs> it looks so juicy too, man. I was so upset, yeah, but sucks. it is what it is. Um, it was a good week with family, good weather. Didn't really get any rain till Friday, which is kind of unheard of for Florida. So worked out well, went to Disney for a couple of days, got to spend some time with the mouse, got to see the new star Wars, star Wars area. Fantastic. Uh, and you got a week off the podcast, man. So. I did. That's the one thing I didn't like. I wish I was here because I missed a great show. Yeah, um, it's all good, Bros. But you need a break every now and then so you don't get burnt out. I mean, you're not wrong. I tell you what, uh, I didn't miss work at all, but uh, I did miss the podcast. But it's okay. I'm back now, and I'm back for a great show that I'm, I'm super pumped for. No, you're not. It's a lot. Yeah, I am. But it's okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the show, man. I'm I'm super I'm pumped. pumped so yeah, let's definitely get into it. So everyone at when ICAST came down and they were looking at all the kayak stuff, you know, companies were coming out and then Bonafide out of nowhere introduced or announced the new RVR 119. And we have Mr. Hans. Oh, Brad touched it at the same time I did. <laughs> How you doing? What's up, guys? How's it going? Oh, good. Living, good. Living the dream. <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so iCast, like I was saying, you know, you guys, this is Hans. For the people at home who don't know who you are, give yourself a little backstory. Let them know what you're about, who you are. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Hans Newts. Um, and uh, I was uh, one of the OGs with Bonafide Kayaks, I guess you could say. So 
Um, I've been doing developing designing kayaks for uh, over 10 years. Um, probably, uh, probably have designed one of the uh, one of the kayaks that that, that you may be paddling these days, <laughs> <laughs> or had something to do with it. But uh, yeah. uh, no, uh, love it. I, I love kayak fishing, and um, uh, and I like to you know get get a chance to to talk about it with uh, with people that love to to get out too. So that's it's it's great. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we're super pumped to have you on. Um, now a little backstory being the joyous, uh, person I am, which is not true, but I'm lucky enough (laughs) to be on team bonafide. So I kind of got a little prequel to, you know, the RVR, the video that was shown at ICAST and what was announced. And, uh, I can just say I'm pumped to say the least. Uh, so kind of, yeah. I guess, Brad, how do you want to start on this? You want to start it uh, up or? Yeah, let's start with like the design process. Cause I, I, that's, that always interests me. Like what all goes, goes into the whole design process of a kayak. Yeah. Yeah. This, this one, um, first thing I'll say, like this boat for me is like, this has been one that I've wanted to do for a long time. And I actually started working on this years ago. Um, and it's, it's been evolving partly in my brain <laughs> for a while, <laughs> yeah. but also um, it's been, it's been something that I've been chipping away at because uh, it's really hard to develop a river, a, a boat that's river specific because right. uh, when you run the numbers, it's like, well, how many people are going to buy a river boat? Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but I feel, so I feel really strongly about the fact that, uh, the roots of kayak fishing are rivers and I I love fishing rivers. And I think for me, the thing about kayak fishing is that it's, it's always adventure. Like it's just an adventure, you know, you don't know what you're getting into every time you you go out it can be different. It's, you know, it's different from big lakes to if you're out, um, you know, in the intercoastal waterways or, or out off of, uh, uh, you know, floating over a, a reef somewhere, you know, it could be anything, but the adventure part of it is what it is. And I think that like, there are so many, you know, millions of miles of rivers just in the Appalachian, you know, region alone draining out of the, out of the mountains that like, why don't we have a boat that we make specific for accessing those rivers? Cause I mean, there's some, some great, there's some great water that, uh, very few people have access to, you know? And so, uh, that's kind of what my, that's my passion is, is, is smallmouth and fishing rivers. And if you ever want to go fish, go fishing and invite me, uh, if it's river fishing, I'm, I'm there. (laughs) (laughs) That's my motto too, man. I I love small mouth and rivers. I do too. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, a perfect convert of that because, I've always I've fished largies and big water and big lakes, but what I learned with rivers and Brad used to preach it to me, and now he's preaching to the choir is you can go out at the same stretch of river at different times of the year, and it'd be different water every time. Yeah. So, and then smallmouth is easily the best fighting game fish I've ever fished. It's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> it's it's intoxicating. It so. really is. There's so much fun to catch, and um, you know they just even just getting them into into the boat they're just they're they're so mad and i, I love it i mean so yeah. you know uh so that i mean that was definitely like i think for the rvr um uh i think we you know it, it bonafide we have boats that can fish rivers and i think that's kind mm-hmm. of been one of the questions that a lot of people are like well wait a minute i you know i fish rivers i've been a bonafide and that's that's great uh, but I also think that like for I want Bonafide to be able to really lean into uh, doing one thing really well. So mm-hmm. if we do a river boat, it's gonna I want it to be great for rivers. And it's not to say that you can't fish rivers in in our other boats. And the RS, um, a lot of people have found out that the RS is a pretty good boat for fishing rivers. You know, mm-hmm. it's, 
Mm -hmm. um, it has some great, uh, great shape to it for, uh, uh, it's got a little bit more rocker in the hole. Um, and, uh, and so, and it's, it's relatively lightweight, so it's great for fishing rivers. And so, um, you know, all of that's great. The RVR is not the RS. I've, I've taken, um, a couple of elements that I believe are just great for all of our boats and, and held on to those. But, um, this thing's a, it's a whole, it's a whole new beast. So, um, you know, it's been a, a while in development, but we're, uh, we're finally able to, to, to launch it. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Um, uh, so talk, speaking of river boats, what makes a boat like river specific? I know there's more than one answer to that, but yeah yeah um yeah for sure and you you could get a lot of opinion on this kind of thing i think um the focus here was uh was that a river boat it's got, one it has to have a different type of like uh, shape to the bow and the stern mm -hmm. because when you get you want to when you're fishing rivers you want to be able to fish upstream as much as downstream and that boat has got to perform whether it's facing in either direction right. and the, the profile of the boat needs to be more um i would say like symmetric and and bona fide boats if you look at the the i call it the wetted surface but the, if you look at the 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 area of the boat that's under the water mm -hmm. bona fide boats are not symmetric boats and they have uh, an enormous amount of stability packed into um the 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 footprint of the boat and so this boat if you look at it it's more symmetric which means it drifts more evenly which you that's what you need in in uh, in moving water and then the other thing I, i'm using my hands but i'm gonna grab um i'm gonna grab a boat real quick because that's easier so we'll put you a full screen for this yeah there you go so here's a this is a little, this is a little mini kayak it's uh <laughs> it's one that's been around a little while um but what, what you see, is it okay to geek out like this? Is this yeah, cool? oh, that's perfect. That's, we love it. Uh, we love this. Yeah. Okay. So you, what you want in a, in a river boat is you want the boat to have more rocker in the mm -hmm. bow, in the bow and the stern. There's the, there's the bow, there's the stern. And so um, with the RVR, what we're doing is um, we've given it more rocker so the boat can actually pivot this mm -hmm. way. Um easier and that means that you're gonna be able to change angle quickly moving between boulders or whether you're upstream you need to change angles or downstream or if you're floating like the turn of a river you can pivot the boat to get cat to be casting uh more accurately quicker uh and 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 more quickly which is what you need to do you know you you have sometimes you've got to have seconds of time, you know, to make that cast before your boats moved out of position when you're in moving water. So mm -hmm. the boat's got to be able to pivot like this. So in order to do that, you've got to have more, um, more rocker in the boat. So the problem with that is that the boat, um, it doesn't track then you, when you have a boat that has a lot of rocker in it, when you try to paddle it straight forward, it's going to start, uh, kind of walking as it goes. Right. And so that, um, I'll put my model down. <laughs> um, that is why uh, this boat, we, I specifically um, determined that I wanted to put a drop skeg in this boat. Such um, a great idea too. And, yeah. Oh, and the, yeah. the drop skeg is, is actually proven. Um, it's, it's a proven part that, that we use at Big Adventure for whitewater. It's actually already in a, the, the, a race boat that is used for racing mm. the, the middle, um, the middle section of the narrows of the green um, and that drop skeg. So that drop skeg takes, allows you to have a boat that has a lot of pivot and then you drop the skeg and it takes the pivot out of the boat and allows you to track straight. And so you get the kind of the best of both worlds with, uh, with that. And, and that's what this boat's uh, really intended to do. That's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's super inter interesting. And I watched the video <clears throat> that you did with Chad at iCast. Um, and you kind of said what was something I really liked because a lot of people don't think about it. When you think about river fishing, it's not just fishing the river. It's getting to the river. It's portaging the river. Yeah. So can you kind of, I mean, and it's, 
as as someone, I mean, me and Brad's done a stretch to where we had to lift. I can't. I had the, like three feet over the dam. Three yeah. feet over the dam, and I had uh, I had the RS, but I had it loaded down with as much crap as I could think of because I I thought yeah. he was like, oh yeah, it's just a little portage, and I was gonna get out and drag it and not care. No, it wasn't. It was like we were lifting the boat out of the water, and no, uh, not easy. So, well, no, that's it's it's not. And so, if you could explain a little bit what your thought process behind that was in designing it for portaging and things along those lines. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, you know, I kind of go back to my white, my more like whitewater design days, I would say. But, you know, whitewater boats take a, a massive beating. You know, they're going to go they, they're using uh, boulders and rocks to 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 launch the boat off rapids. So, you know, a bo- if you boof a whitewater boat, you're you're boofing it off a boulder and you're going mm-hmm. you're clearing the rapid. So you clear the hydraulic to get to the next rapid. And we're not boofing uh, bona fide boats, <laughs> but, yeah. the, but the the thought is that um, these boats need to be. If you want them to be lightweight, you you take you know you take them stripped down a couple a couple of rods, a little bit of tackle, and you really don't have a a lot to weigh you down. So if you need to go over a guardrail to get down to where you're going, um, you, you need to come up a bank. If you need to, if you get going upstream and you need to pull over, uh, uh, you know, a band of rocks to get to the next rapid above the boat's not super heavy and it. And all the surfaces are meant to drag so that they, so that when you hit stuff, you're not just grinding all the plastic off. Right. So that you, all the, the surfaces can, can withstand, um, you know, getting drug around. And so that was kind of like, I've, I don't know that I don't know this is a tagline for us, but I feel I kind of I've like to sell it as saying, you know, boat ramps are optional for this boat because it's it's a boat for your it's a boat for your adventure. Like if you're you, you and a buddy are like, man, I think this river might fish really well up up this section or whatever, but we're not sure this is the boat. You know, you can you you would want to take this boat. It still has twin skid plates at the back. So you can drag it with with stuff in it and it won't it won't flop over on you which is mm-hmm. really nice but you could take a drag strap and drag it flat bottoms or drag it on the skid plates and then the other thing is that like you can't see it yet but because uh, i haven't really shown the whole boat but i've built grip points into the boat in different places so that if you're trying to throw this thing up into a truck or over a guardrail or whatever you've got more more grab handles. So you've actually got one behind the seat. Um, you've got one, you've got two extra grab handles under the bow. Um, there's a strap across the front. That's great for like, kind of just, if you're wade fishing, you can, you can snot, uh, like tie onto that strap and, and have the boat float behind you. Um, so there's a lot of like spots where this boat can be, uh, handled, you know, where it can be pulled around. So yeah, so the um, you know you've got a picture up there. Um, so there's a grab handle right behind the seat as well as right well as here. side entry handles. Yep, there's one tucked in behind there that you can't see. And then um, yep, and then up under the the bow of the uh, uh, the the bow sort of wave splash area, I've got some handles tucked in up there too. Um, so it's it's definitely for a boat for maneuverability. Um, and it also is a boat that, um, is not going to be as stable as the RS or the SS series, because Mm -hmm. in order to make a boat that moves through moving water better, you have to be able to lean the boat. So you have to be able to control it with lean. And so that's another part of it. I have, uh, let's see. Well, you can see I'm bouncing around here, but this is my, um, so I'm, this is a 3d printed, um, section of the, of the RVR. Mm -hmm. And so, um, one thing you, one thing that you can see here is that the, the bow of the boat, this, this surface is made for deflecting over rocks. Mm -hmm. And so, so that, let's see if I can tip it that way. There you go. You get a good shot of that. So that is, um, 
that is what I, I call it wedging, but like when you're, you're pulling up into um, a, a, a spot you're going to fish, a lot of times you just want to look for a, a boulder or a log or something you can just sort of wedge your boat up, up onto. Yep. And that, that is meant for that so that you're going to distribute all the wear there's, you can, you know, you can, you can wedge this in it and you're not going, you're not just wearing plastic off and this right. is all kicked in rocker so that it won't, it will, um, it will uh, land on beaches and stuff like that. So that gives okay. you an idea of sort of what it is. And there are those handles. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Built into it. Yeah. That's oh, that's, that's cool. different. We haven't been, uh, we haven't seen anything like that yet. Yeah. So very cool. Scale print. Um, so that just kind of gives you an idea of some of the, uh, what some of the, the boats going to be like, uh, in terms of like fishability for rivers. Um, and, uh, and then of course, you know, in the bow, um, one of the other things w that I did was integrate the, the, the anchor wizard, uh, into the side of the boat. And then we're, we're going to, um, we're going to plumb the boat with, um, uh, with the tubing so that you can run the anchor lines through the boat. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. It just, it cleans up, cleans up all the space, which is one thing, like even on my river boat, like I've been f not forcing myself because the P127 surprisingly is amazing on the river. It's mm -hmm. a huge boat, even with the drive. Like Brad, I'll go out to the river. He's like, "Why are you bringing out the P? It's like it's such a big boat." And because he has to struggle and help me carry it uphill, but <laughs> he's like, "You don't need to bring all this." I was like, "Dude, I can just pedal and not have to use a stupid anchor." Yeah, because the anchor line's always in my way, or if I get it out of my way, it's in a bad spot to where I, like I can't reach it very well, and the line always it somehow always gets stuck on something, or I'm an idiot yeah. and get something stuck on it. Yeah, I mean crankbaits I've got stuck in anchor lines, not even funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> so like that yeah. when I, I that's amazing, like just to have it, it's it cleans that workspace up, which is what I love. So that's dope. And also the, I think having the anchor lines run on the deck of the boat, um, it's, it's also just a foot catch. Like a lot of times I'm yeah. in and out of the boat and having stuff, uh, lines running up there is as much as you can clean it up. It's nice because then it's, yeah. it's you're just not going to, you know, get your foot caught on it in or out of the boat or whatever. Um, that it, it creates like a safety issue as well because if you flip it and your foot gets caught in it while you're underwater mm -hmm. that could be bad yeah, yeah absolutely and and when we launch this boat uh we're definitely going to do some some educational videos about like um because river fishing can be dangerous and so we're going to try and do some educational stuff along with it mm -hmm. and try to to bring uh bring people along with like the safety of like, how do you fish rivers? You know, make sure you're fishing with someone else. Make sure people, you know, you know, uh, you learn how to scout rapids if you're if you're going into stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of those things and, and certainly anchoring upstream and downstream can be, you know, pretty dangerous. So you've got to you've, you've got to know what you're doing. On, yeah. On that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've I've cut there's I've got anchors in my river near me that are still there because i've had to cut Same them I've been, in, I've been in sketchy situations to where my anchor wouldn't budge yep. and it was starting to like another thing i was and i thought about this after the fact i said i like a clean workspace nine times out of ten to run an anchor wizard off the bow or the stern effectively you need to put some type of like like i use the eyelets from yak attack mm -hmm. yep. to where i can run the line through so it keeps it more manageable and whatnot that that also frees up track space. That's, that's another thing. But yeah, anyway, we move we move past that fast. So I'm past it. I just wanted to add that because that's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I like how a side bar from this is you're releasing a river boat, but you're also going to educate the people who would be buying the river boat. Because like you said, there's a lot. I mean, I talk to two or three people a day who ask, "Hey, I'm going to a river." I've never really fished rivers. What do you think mm -hmm. I should do? And at mm -hmm. first, before I tell people, I say, go walk it first mm -hmm. just to see, go scout it. Cause it's, I keep, keep the same concept when I'm hunting. Like if I go somewhere and I'm hunting, I'm going to scout the area to see where stuff is. It's the same thing in rivers, but instead of scouting for animal sign or things like that, I'm scouting for strainers, rapids, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm looking for eddies to fish and things like that. But, 
that's that's pretty cool that you guys are going to make like a, a string of educational stuff to kind of help the angler use the boat safely yeah which is a, a big I, I thing it's going to be great too because i'll be able to explain why certain things on the boat were made a certain way you know um because it is it's it's uh it's a it's a lot if you're if you're starting out river fishing um you might just be you know your first boat may be just a really basic sit inside or something yep. until you you dump it <laughs> and and lose all your gear or whatever yeah yeah i started with a sun dolphin so yeah i uh, yeah i know all about the the cheap sit-ins um i mean it did the job but yeah i, I almost drowned like four times um <laughs> Jeez. So, uh, I want to caveat a little mm -hmm. bit. Is your background like originally? Did it kind of start in the whitewater realm? Yeah, yeah. So i i started um, uh, I started whitewater kayaking um, while I was in design school, mm -hmm. and uh, did some other things. And then years later, kind of came around to um, you know I've always stayed in the or been done a lot of outdoor industry type stuff you know, mountain biking, um, you know, climbing, camping, all that kind of stuff. And so, um, I got the chance down the road to, uh, to look at, at whitewater kayak design and I, I jumped on it and, and, uh, that's how I ended up in the kayak industry. Um, and then as a kid, I fished a lot, but then as an adult, I didn't fish. And so I had to learn. And, and the other thing, too, is I fished like northern, really like Canadian type water. Mm. So I didn't know anything about bass fishing when I started. And that <laughs> man, that's like that. That's been really humbling, like trying to <laughs> bat, like trying to fish for bass. And in, in the like the, I'm in South Carolina. So, you know, especially down south. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. Uh, it's humbling. And I, my kids laugh at me. You know, they're like, you know. They're like, hey, did you catch anything? And they're like, well, not much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, I, I do. I, I'm very fortunate because I get to go out and fish with a lot of people that are really know what they're doing. So I can usually get on something, you know. But uh, yeah, um, you know, as opposed to fishing up north where you could literally throw a dinner spoon in the water, and, you know, a pike would hit it. Uh, yeah, it's just <laughs> you know, down here you really have to know what you're doing. And, and that's what makes the design side of it fun because this is just, a, it's kind of a limitless amount of things that you can improve on these, on these mm -hmm. products. So, right. Yeah. So I, with that whitewater background and we'll get back to the RVR, I just think it's, it's important to have some background on how much of your experience in whitewater, because you were already talking about boofing and I know we're mm -hmm. all the listeners, we're not boofing bona fide kayaks but i don't want <laughs> somebody to be like line. i don't want somebody to get the rvr and be like yeah matt Souter said i can boof it and then they boof it and like <laughs> die that would suck that's like that's uh, like my word that's when people uh, side caveat to that too i'm gonna go down eighteen thousand rabbit holes just get ready for it uh i every time someone asks me a question about the river i always like am so super technical with advice i give because i'm so worried i'm gonna tell somebody to do something that i because I'm an idiot. Do yeah. all, like when I got me and Brad went out and he was fishing. Thanks, uh, thanks, Brad. Preferences for checking and make sure I wasn't dead because he didn't do that. But I trying to get back in my kayak because I was wading up a riffle and I slipped on a rock and almost got sucked back down into the riffle and the kayak went over top of me. I'm just an idiot and I do stuff, but I'm so afraid when I tell people to like, oh yeah, you can do that. And then I stop myself and be like, yeah, that's probably not safe. You shouldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> How much of back to the question, Matt? Stay on target. Um, how how much of your whitewater experience did you bring over to designing this riverboat for Bonafide? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I feel like knowing. Uh, so so first of all, let me say this: I'm a whitewater like in terms of whitewater skill. I'm like a solid three out of six. <laughs> okay. I'm, so a, like, I'm a solid negative two. So. I am, yeah, I'm like mediocre, mediocre to the core of, of my whitewater skills. But I did, uh, uh, you know, I did a series of whitewater boats where I relied on really, really, you know, like guys that were going to the Olympics, you know, 
in slalom for for their expertise right so mm -hmm. like you know the the whitewater side of it i i was able to understand the technique in order to to enough to be able to do the whitewater boats and i think it's the technique of what you need to do that influences this because now like i know the struggles of of kayak fishing in, uh, in windy conditions or moving water conditions. So I know those struggles. And then you add that to what I know about how to, how to ferry through some rapids or attain, you know, attain, who, who knows what attainment is? Well, you know, whitewater boaters do, um, cause they practice attainment. It's how you get better at whitewater boating. Well, you can attain, you can get on a, go through a class one rapid in a boat like this, and you can, you can, you know, depending on the rapid, um, you can go upstream and fish upstream, which is mm -hmm. a lot of times far better for catching fish, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. so no, my knowledge of the technique of how to paddle a whitewater boat allows me to understand more about what this, what I feel this boat needs, you know, mm -hmm. in order to make it work in rapids. And so I spent, uh, we have a, a jankety old, uh, I just used the word janky. <laughs> We have a jankety old prototype uh, that was cobbled together out of some stuff. And I used that boat a lot, too, because it had some features in it that I really uh, I really needed to understand how they were working in the in the moving water. So I, I was modifying things and trying stuff out and, and able to um, really kind of understand what this boat needs to be. Um, but, yeah, I think that's a good question. It, you know, you you really do need to know um how that works and i think it'll be great i'd love it would i would love to see people uh who take a boat like this into kayak fishing and see how they progress into like uh being say you know being safer better better river fishermen you know for one thing but also like being able to get you know do those really great runs you know there are some places where you can't um you can't fish a sections because you've got to put in way up here and you've got an 11 mile float yep. where you can't, you can't be on someone's property. So you've got to get through, you know, um, those kinds of sections. There's some, there's some great stuff out there. So I think it's going to be cool to see how the boat gets used when we, uh, you know, when we get some education out there too. Yeah. I'm excited too. Uh, so I want to get into some of these features because I know, I know we're, we're halfway through the show already. So, um, Sorry. so starting here, it looked like behind the anchor wizard, uh, coming out the bow, is that an extra like accessory plate up front? Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, uh, the bow has an accessory plate because you're going to want to be able to feed the, um, uh, uh, you always want to be able to feed stuff bow and stern. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to mold a boat up front that you can't get into. And we're, we're going to route the tubing so that there's going to be tubing inside the boat already. So if the anchor wizard will come as its own accessory that we're, we're going to be able to offer uh, either a single or a double, you can buy one or the other, but you're going to be able to route the anchor wizard through and then it will, it will pop out of the boat up, up on the bow. And there is a, a roller that I've designed and hang on a second. Hang on. There's a there's a roller because it's you know you want to be kind of stealthy in um, mm -hmm. when you're letting the anchor oh, yeah. out. The carabiner in, of the anchor usually makes a, a bunch of noise and it scares the fish away. So this is again a printed part, but this is a this will be a rubber roller that okay. that goes into the this is the bow of the boat. <laughs> That's so awesome <laughs> for everyone at home. If you just listen to us going to work, put it on pause now. Get to work, hide from your boss, watch us on YouTube because he's bringing out every single toy imaginable that shows this boat and it's amazing. Well, it's like yeah. section pieces of the kayak. Yeah, so I'm printing, I, I printed pieces of it. This is something That's I cool. was using just to test things out, you know, and so this is just mm -hmm. sitting in my office. But um, basically this, check, this is like a show and tell right here. This roller is bolting, That's cool. it's going to bolt into, the, into here and this is going to allow... So awesome. The anchor line to be able to let 
uh, let out because you know your anchor is going to exist in this space here. Mm -hmm. um, it'll pull like pull up and 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 end here, and then when you let it out, you don't want that carabiner to to come flying out of there and thump against the boat. So that's that's the idea with having a rubber roller there is to quiet everything down. That then, you don't you don't have to uh, install the uh, chute for the anchor wizard drill holes up yeah. front. Exactly. Yeah. And this is this is sort of a substitute for the chute. There are those grab handles. But um, OK, Mold so th in. this gives you a spot for your anchor to nest up front. And it's just it's a little bit more compact, but it also allows you to have the um, your anchor line is going to come out here and go straight down to it. So it's all kind of out of the way. And, and hopefully uh, it, it keeps things kind of. Uh, uh organized for you as well right that's cool so this yeah, is that's, that's the awesome. that's the bow right there <laughs> all right so yeah, that i don't think i've ever seen a roller system like that no nobody has man that. manufactured like i'm talking even like i'm not talking huge huge boats but even yeah. boats that give an anchor ability aren't like that it's more you just throw the anchor and you have 40,000 decibels of noise under the water and scares fish to death. <laughs> like that's, that's awesome. Someone just the minute details that you're thinking about that I would have never even, I would never thought to put a roller. I just say, I just got to buy another $60 shoot from anchor wizard and call it a day. So that's, yeah. well, that's we nice. kept, you know, I, I kept hearing from customers uh, that would run a line anchor wizard line out there. SS 127 through the handle yeah, that's and it I works. Do. And that's what what I intended to do. But a lot of customers were like anglers were like afraid that the line was going to cut their boat or um, and for me, it was a like it was a noise issue. So I was when yeah. I was looking at this boat, I was like, my problem is the noise. The boat's going to hold up fine, but I just don't like the noise of that. I have a carabiner in that spot. And every time that carabiner goes out, it it's like, you know, you hear that thump and then, you know, if the fish are up in the next rapid up they're they're gonna they're gonna hear that potential yeah. that's why you know I, I just wanted to solve that problem um and hopefully uh you know hopefully we we did a, a pretty good job and people will like how it works but yeah the the um the whole bow area was kind of really <clears throat> built around that that idea of of having the anchor wizard integrated and uh being able to to um, access that that stuff so well and, and plus the the accessory plate right there that's going to allow people to you know people are going to put like an xi3 on the front so that makes it a little bit easier to do so <laughs> yeah and and so um uh, some of the uh some of the feedback i've gotten is like you know um there's no you know no space for an xi3 i mean I don't, I'm not going to recommend putting an XI3 on a riverboat. Yeah. Um, Somebody's going to do it though. Yep. Someone's going to try and do it. Yeah. But one thing that, um, one thing I wanted to, to talk about too on the bow of the boat is that uh, there's no hatch up there. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, that is a little different from what uh, we're used to seeing these days. It's like most boats have a hatch up front. Mm hmm. But yeah. for me, a, a true riverboat, you want it to be as watertight as it can be. And if you look at like, um, you know, if you look at it, like if somebody's on an, uh, an oar boat, like a drift boat, all right, you're going to, if you have stuff that needs to stay dry, it goes in a dry bag. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I had put a hatch on the bow of this boat, the interior room wouldn't have been that big. And so um, you wouldn't get that much in there. So what I did was I designed a space up front and then there's a space in the back where you can lash down dry bags. And so uh, dry bags are what you should use. If let's say you want to use this boat for camping, um, that strap up front is meant to hold the bag down and we're going to do an accessory bag as well. So you can have a, a, an accessory bag that fits that area but you really want the bag itself to be um, on the deck of the boat, as opposed to like uh, trying to open a hatch, stuff a bunch of stuff in there. And then you're, you're uh, you go through a couple of class two rapids and all of a sudden you're sleeping, you know, your sleeping bags wet. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, the whole point is that this boat's the you've got two uh, of the access plates to keep, you know, so you have access to the boat, but the interior of the boat is sealed off pretty good. So you're not going to have as much chance of getting water in. You know? All right. Now it does. It's up to you how many dr holes you drill in a boat. You know when you're rigging stuff. <laughs> yeah, I can't help you there, but I we're trying to keep the boat as dry as we can to to, to start with. Yeah, and I will. I'll, I'll attest to what Brad said. Somebody's got to put an XI three on this probably within a week of it coming out because I've seen XI threes on the EX. I've seen XI three like that's <laughs> like I, when I saw that I was like that's like. <laughs> Like even if I take a hard turn with an XI three fifty five pound, it, it makes me a little sketched. So I oh, can't yeah. believe they put it on an EX where like that's just that's too much for me. But somebody's got to do it. Somebody so having the access, yeah, having the accessory plate there, I like that. Um, it also opens kind of if you wanted. I'm sure we'll get to it, but just my thought: if you wanted to run a fish finder, uh, you mm -hmm. can put a battery into there, or you can run cables from the front all the way to the back. Like you can, yeah do the through pass kit. I mean, it, 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 you're giving the customer the option to do what they want, which is what I like. It's not a, you're stuck yeah. with this and this is all you get. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and there, there's going to be access at the middle of the boat too, so that you can, you can pass stuff through at, uh, in the like under the seat. It's on the, t if you look at, um, let's see, it's your image here. It's on the, the starboard. So the top side of the view. Okay. Uh, just to the side of the seat that's okay a, there's a there are three deck plates um the two deck plates that you see that are towards the front of the boat those two deck plates are um just mounting plates so you can screw stuff into them and then you can bolt them to the boat you don't have to drill the boat okay but, the, but then the third deck plate that's sitting towards the back that one has access into the boat and that is how we um actually put the skeg system into the boat so there is access there that you'll have into the boat if you want to do some rigging there I got um, you. that's awesome so, so that deck plate you all those deck plates are meant you that you can mount stuff to them but um that one is is going to be interior access so you, you can route stuff to it, matt mentioned a good point about the uh the fish finder too uh, you can either run it through that or you can do what everybody else does on a bonafide and I, I like that you guys added the dry pod putting it on the dry pod yeah we were the battery i was inside. I was waiting to get to the dry pod because that's like that's <laughs> that's, that that's a bona fide staple. You got to have the it dry is. Pod. Yeah. It just is. It's just there. Like that's a, if I yeah. had one complaint, and I love the P one twenty seven. We've talked about it. I love it. One the only complaint is like, man, I just don't have a dry pod. I know. Obviously, I know why I can't have a dry pod because I yeah. have the pedals there. But like, I want it. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. No, I get it. And, and so uh, that was something. There are two things that I pulled from the SS. Uh, one was the dry pod. And, you know, truthfully, a riverboat to, for me, like a riverboat, I don't really use a fish finder that much. So right. I didn't. But um, this boat's this is going to be a boat that you if if you fish primarily rivers, but but you're also on lakes. You know, or you start out on a lake and then you head up river. You're gonna you're gonna want a fish finder, and I wanted to use the SS uh, dry pod so that if you if you already had an SS boat, now if you buy this boat now you've got one that could be rigged up with a fish finder, and you've got one that's just you know empty. So you have two, if, you know, you'd have two pods essentially. It's the and exact same pod. It's the exact same pod. That's yep. awesome. And it fits that's the same. It fits the same way. Uh, okay. So they're going to be plug plug and play uh, across those boats. If you have a, a an SS 127 or an SS 107, the pod will fit the same way. That's cool. Yeah, I I like that cuz you're like exactly what you said if you had especially guys like me, I mean I have three bona fides right now, but but I have four. But anyway, <laughs> guys like me who on my SS 107, I use the pod for fish finder and I have an XI3 on the front of it, the whole shebang yeah. so it'd be nice to where if i just want to take the fish finder out for the exact situation that you explained i'm in a lake and i'm going to go up river i can just pop the pods swap the pods and call it a day and there's yep. no other mo modification i have to do so that's that's awesome yeah i think it's going to be great uh for 
certainly, I mean, I'm a little spoiled, obviously I can choose from a few boats, <laughs> but it is nice to have, I have one pod with my fish finder and it's just, you know, I drop, I can drop it into any of these boats and it, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then, and then the other thing too, that I, I pulled over from the SS was the foot braces. Um, okay. we didn't, we didn't really have to do that, but I, I do believe that, um, motorizing it from the stern is, um, I use motors on river boats. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've motorized my P127 sometimes and I love it. Um, so I went ahead and added the SS foot braces because you can make those rudderable, uh, really easy. Yeah. And so, uh, foot steering, um, you know, foot steering in a torpedo and I, you know, I'll lift the torpedo to where the props just, you know, just kind of barely in the water. And I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm cutting through the water in, in just a few inches. Yep. And, uh, and so motors from in the stern, if they're set up correctly, and if you know what you're doing to some extent, like motors in the stern are great, you know? And so, uh, I, I want, definitely want this boat to be good for that. So there's a place to store the battery, uh, forward of the, the, uh, crate area. And then we're going to have a, an accessory mounting plate that will be really good for, for motors as well. I was just recently telling Matt that Bonafide's foot pedals are probably the best ones I've ever had in a kayak. And I, so I, I'm currently in a Sholey right now. I want to replace my foot pedals with some Bonafide foot pedals. That's how good yeah. these things are. We were talking about that. I was like, dude, I'm sure we can make that work. I mean, oh, yeah, it'll, it'll work. It's just, it's just a couple holes. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. We get some 303 call today. It's fine. Yeah, there's the, that's it. 303 is your key there because it's their metal <laughs> tracks. So once you get some grit in there, you gotta you gotta yeah. clear it out. But yeah, I agree. They are uh, functional, and you could probably figure out a way to make it work. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I want to stay uh, at the bow for a second with, and you talked, you talked a little bit about the strap. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like, is there above the accessory plate, is there another strap that's running right there? Yeah. Yeah. So there, the, there is a paddle park type strap that, that mm -hmm. comes over from the SS 127. And that strap is for, uh, you know, it's for rod tip, uh, like if you set your rod tips down quickly, um, just to keep them from rolling off the boat, you know, they've got those, that strap has these little, um, these little ridges that just keep you, keep your rods in place. And then it's kind of hard to see, but if you look forward of that strap, there is a carve out and your paddle will slide under there. Um, oh, so I your paddle will slide oh, under cool. the strap and land on that ledge. And then your paddle will come to rest on the, on the, the strap that says bonafide on it I'm pointing at the screen like it's going to be there but uh <laughs> sorry about that so you're going to be able to there's a couple different ways you can park your paddle quickly that's the i guess that's the point i should make um and then the strap that says bonafide on it that is a transport strap so it's a grab it's a grab handle or a grab strap but it's also a strap that you can unclip throw your rods under it and you can, you can then uh, strap your rods down when you're transporting the boat. Yeah. That's cool. That's I, cool. I didn't even notice that first strap up there, the ball strap. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. The, that's cool. That's a, that's from the SS 127. Gotcha. So it, it's, um, those are some options for how, you know, everyone's going to use it a little bit differently, but those are some options for the ways that we, you know, that you can use it up front and, and really like, when you're fishing rivers, it's all about speed. Sometimes you got to throw mm -hmm. the rod down, grab your paddle, make a couple, a uh, couple of paddle strokes and then keep fishing. Or you got to jump out yeah. really quick. You know, yeah. I mean, it's all about like, uh, having the, the being able to, to, to make yeah. those maneuvers fast. Yeah. So that's what this is. That's what this is for. If there's anybody like me, the, they'll keep casting until the very last second going through a riffle. And then you end up yeah. catching a fish going backwards in a riffle and you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've done yeah. that yeah. so many times. I'm just, you know, I'm, yeah. I get greedy. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I did. I did. I wasn't as in bad of a situation when I was going down that riffle when we went out with Douglas a couple weeks ago and I was throwing a top water through it and a little small mouth came up and smashed it in the riffle and I'm fighting it as I'm going back. And I was like, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. This isn't good. Like I'm trying not to keep like, cause it's, it's scary, straight. Man. 
it, well, it was super scary because it was narrow. There was grass on both sides and then a tree that came over. And I was like, yep. man, if my rod tips in the air, I'm just going to break a $300 rod. And I'm going to cry. So I just like kept it down and just drug the fish through the riffle. Yep. Got on the boat, put them out right when I pulled them out, just flopped off. And I was like, that was a waste of time. But <laughs> it's so much gonna, fun, though. It yeah, is. I, mean, oh, I loved it. Like I was chaos. upset. I lost the fish. I touched the water before he hit the water. So technically it's a win, but it, it's, <laughs> it's super fun. Now, one thing I'm going to say, just because pre-show, you said you like challenging questions and you want the pressure a little bit. I'm assuming this is just me being stupid, but sometimes stupid questions get the greatest answers. So the front of the boat toward the accessory plate, I'm assuming that's going to slope back to your scupper holes because i don't mm -hmm. see any scuppers up front unless they're underneath that bona fide strap yeah yes that's right you got the dry pot area too yep that's true yeah there's the dry pot area i was just for the people there's going to be someone who says well it looks like water's going to pull up there so nah. yeah yeah i think um so one thing that's kind of cool that you can't tell from this image is that the floor of this uh this boat actually ramps up towards the front so that um, when when you take a wave, um, it, you're there is water that could that could sit up there, but it's as you, as you move along, it's going to move back and it's going to drain out to the scuppers. That um, there are some relatively deep channels that run along there. So the front scuppers and then the secondary scuppers are going to get that water out of there pretty quick. Right. But what I, what I didn't want to do is have um, a big like bulkhead wall up there um, that most boats have that bulkhead wall. I really wanted the floor to all sort of drain back towards uh, kind of towards to where your feet are at so that that water starts to evacuate as quick as you can get it out of there. I'm kind of picturing like a front that looks like the you pick a little bit. Is that kind of similar? A little bit. Yeah. It's a little deeper than that. And okay. so like, I got you. I could see where now let's say you you take this boat and you leave it on your kayak trailer out in the rain at just the perfect angle. You know, mm -hmm. that thing's going to hold some water there, you know, because you can't uh, because it is a, a, a storage spot. But as you're running rapids and things, that water is going to going to push towards the back. And the, and the other thing about it is like as you're um, I'm pulling this up real quick as you're running rapids, this this area here is is a water diverter so let's see if i can point nope. this is all like water diversion in this area so as the boat is is going down through the rapids the first um uh, sort of line of defense for you for keeping your boat dry is going to be in this area so the water's mm -hmm. going to hit it and then slap outward as opposed to just coming all over the top right and so you kind of get water diversion here and then you get a little bit here Let's see. I go to that side. You get a little bit over along this side uh, before you get water just dumping in. Of course, as you if you take a big wave, the water is going to have to come back out, uh, just like any boat. But there is kind of these are these are meant to uh, to move water away from the boat while you're going down through the rapids. Interesting. 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 Yeah. That's cool. So okay. you you want to move back to the catch recess? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. So we've got the bow, SS-127, SS-107 pod, SS-127, SS-107 uh, mm -hmm. foot rests, which I'm a super big fan of that. Um, yeah, let's move to the next thing, which is the catchboard recess or the measuring board recess. Yeah. Yep. I got a question on this, like, really quick, just because, like, in the picture, it makes it look like it sticks off the bottom a couple inches. Is that so? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so what I did on this, uh, was, and I know, the, I know the Sholey has it good, good on them. <laughs> uh, which say is that is, that is one thing when it was announced in this picture started making their rounds, people were, you know, I mean, I've heard it from people when I was talking about it and, you know, even Brad, you know, you mentioned, he's like, Oh, it's got a catchboard recess too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it does. And you heard some people say, Oh, the Sholey had that first. Well, yeah who cares it's, dude yeah it's a I it's mean, an awesome feature every kayak should i agree have it. it it's it's i everyone should do it now like it's done <laughs> right. yeah. well you know i think we all saw at some point we all saw how 
uh, measuring a fish can be problematic in yeah. the past year or two, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I think, I don't think that it, it, boat development takes a lot of time. And so, um, you know, this has been in, for sure, this has been in my, my plan for quite a while, but the fact that someone else did it is just confirmation that it was something mm -hmm. that should be done. Um, so I did it a little differently, but, um, you know, Hey, uh, prop both ways probably work, but this one's off the floor a little bit. So your feet will, uh, will be able to be under the board, um, yeah. which, uh, so if you, you, you can either sit cross, uh, kind of like cross legged a little bit or, or have your, your toes up under the board and then the fish and then the board's actually tilted just, uh, slightly from, uh, starboard to port side. So the fish will slide towards the nice. Uh, towards that's a nice that's touch. awesome. Board. Yeah, that is that's that's one thing I'm sure you've seen just floating around the the team page and the bona fide page and people tag into where most of us always put our boards like Angled. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a I use the and I learned this from Brad. I use the bridge of the board and my net on that downward spiral to make if the fish does want to jump, he's jumping into something. But it also helps get that fish not pressured because you're not putting pressure to James face up there. Um, but it, it gets him more, I don't know, maybe naturally wanting to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. so. Helps with shutting the mouth too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. That's what I've heard. I don't, I don't catch a lot of uh, tournament fish and have to, you know, I don't have a lot of those like 22 inches on the board. So <laughs> I guess if you, <laughs> I wish I did, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I just still need to get a 20. Like, yeah, I've got, I did when I was younger. I know that I hate that shirt. I don't have one because <laughs> I can't, I can't buy one because I don't have a 20. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, I like that. I mean, I, like Brad said, and like, kind of like you said, you know, it, it's a feature that every boat should have. Yeah. You know, yeah. Crescent may have got there, not necessarily quicker. Well, Cause like you said, you've been thinking about this for a while, but you know, it, I'm sure we'll see it on more boats too. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, Hobie kind of did it naturally because, I mean, your board just sits in the floor on those kayaks, like the pro angler, but like an actual recessed, it, it's like, it's no brainer for kayaks like this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a boat this size is, you know, it's, this is because it's a river boat. It's, it's not as big as, you know, a PA 14. So yep. you've got to have some notches in order to make the board, you know, the board fit there, but it, um, it's, it's, if you can definitely, if you can do it, it's a great feature to have, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then with a, a boat like this, a river boat, you're always kind of, you just explained it, but you're fighting for space because if you're going on the river, I've learned this over the last year and you can, and Brad can attest to this. When I went out, I used to take the kitchen sink with me. If I could, I'd take a, a, <laughs> Yeah, rods. gadget low pro XL crate with seven Plano boxes in it. I would bring anywhere from six to eight rods with me. And it didn't matter if we were going out for an hour, if we were going out for a float. Now I'm taking three or four rods. I'm breaking, bringing a battle box with all my terminal in it. And then whatever I want to play with, I got a river box now. Like, so I've realized on the river, you're fighting for space. So having these little features, you know, having your anchor line running through the uh, the boat itself and having spots designated for it next to the seat where it's out of your, you know, your workspace in front of you, having your recess catch board. It's all it's all features that are one point here, one point there, but they add up to a, a overall more enjoyable experience where you're not having to fight for room on stuff. Yeah, it's room is is always a problem and it's really hard to to predict how somebody's going to use uh use the boat. I mean, I'm, I'm blown away at how, uh, bona fide kayaks get rigged. Like I just, people send me photos and I'm like, Holy, I mean, how did you, <laughs> how did you do that? You know, ultimate fish ability. It is. Oh, it, yeah. Tell I, you what, like, I love, I, I love that part of it. Um, I tend to try and bring the kitchen sink myself. Um, but you know, river goals would be like, to be able to, to go out with, uh, you know, a bat, just a small bag and a couple of rods. And, mm -hmm. you know, that to me would be like, 
at some point I would feel like I knew what I was doing if I got down to that little yeah. small amount of tackle. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, yeah. And there's, there's, by the way, there's storage under the seat too. We didn't really, I never really covered that. It's kind of assumed sometimes these days, but there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's storage under the seat. Uh, Is it a, a tray under there or just open storage? So we don't have a tray. It's, it's just, uh, storage area right now. Um, okay. I think we're going to look at something as an accessory for that. Kind of like uh, we're we're working on one for the P one twenty seven. Oh yeah, I I yeah yeah I want. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it because yeah. me and Dave, me and Dave talk, and uh, it's super functional. Yeah, I know, and it's so simple, but I want it really bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's been talking about under storage seat on his one twenty seven for a while now. Yeah. On the P, yeah, yeah I mean P, it's. Yeah. It was, I, I, yeah, it was needed, and and uh, and so we're we do have that coming out. So that that'll be a good thing. We'll we'll probably do something similar for this as an accessory, uh, as well. So speaking of the seat area, is that a new seat or is it the same as the older seats? Uh, so it is. Um, it's a new seat, but we're using some of the geometry slash dna from some of the other seats Mm -hmm. so um so it actually has the p127 style seat feet that go on it back and forth so it slides back and forth so there's about three and a half inches of seat trim on this boat Mm. um, which is a uh not a ton but it what it does is it allows you to um kind of adjust your just get a better fit for the foot braces Mm -hmm. Um, and it allows you to just adjust a little bit if you want a little bit more room or if you are, uh, going to, you might want to trim a little bit differently if you motorize the boat versus paddling it. So it just gives you a little bit more option there. Um, and it's a great, it's a great way to, to mount the seat to the boat. It's just a really solid mount. And so, um, so I, I designed the seat so that it, um, it's wider than the SS seats. Um, it's like, I think it's like, a around 20 inches wide. Um, and it's got a really nice, um, kind of back angle. So your butt's really stuck in the seat nicely for go- running rapids. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, when I say running rapids, it's not like, you know, it's, you're still, you're still running rapids in a sit on top. So mm-hmm. it's all relative to your skills, right? Mm-hmm. But you, you know, you want a nice solid seat for it. And then what you can't really see is like under the seat, I have some notches built into the boat so that if you're going to, if you got to, tr- you know, haul the boat down a trail or you're going to run some, some crazy rapids or whatever, you can actually slide the broad butts like way up under the seat. They nest in there and then you can lash them down. And, and then the rod tips are all kept like within the profile of the boat, you mm-hmm. know, so they're not like, sticking out where that you can snag it a rod tip and I've so done that, that before that's really important i think one thing that the sholey did that was really cool is that the sholey has a way to put some rods up front in and have them in the hatch so they're kind of you know they're storage oriented this is kind of the same idea but this is more <laughs> like if you're running a rapid you want your rods you know all tucked away you can do mm-hmm. that run the rapid and then when you're done pull them back out very cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So, talking about the seat area, and this is going to be a little bit longer show for everyone out there because we still got some stuff to cover. But is, I'm not. Is it too want... much? Am I covering too much here? No, no, it's perfect not at all. Like, I mean, I, we we did I, a show with Drew, and it was like an hour and forty five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, <laughs> y'all y'all just cut me off when you when you're ready. So, all right, but um. Yeah, let, let's talk about these accessory plates here. Uh, you got the Anchor Wizard uh, attached to it and the uh, Torquedo throttle. Yep. Is the, yeah, um, the... Uh, is is there access to the hull from those? Is that how does that work? Uh, no, those are uh, so those are they're kind of like pockets in the boat, Br- like bridging a gap. No, there. Well, there, there's no hole in the boat there. What it is, is uh, when you unscrew that accessory plate, what you'll see underneath there are 
um, the metal inserts that hold it down. And then you'll, okay. see, you'll see a recess. So let's say you, so when you bolt something to that plate, you know, the, the nut is on the underside of that, um, that uh, plate. Plastic. There's Plastic. clearance. There's a place for you to, you can just bolt stuff to the plate and then flip, put everything down and just screw it to the boat. So it sure. gives you the, you know, it gives you a place to nest. I'll call it like you're, you're going to nest the anchor wizard. And, and if you had like a throttle, you could put a throttle on one side, the anchor wizard on the other. But if you were to look at it from a side view, you know, you've got your seat here and everything's kind of nested below the profile of the seat so that, um, so that it, again, it's, it's not up, sticking up out in, in your area of like jumping in and out of the boat. So it's, 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 you know, drop down in the boat. So it's just kind of out of the way. Gotcha. And That's those, cool. the reason I did those plates is because I just, you, maybe you don't even use an anchor wizard, but I, I like the, the idea of having mounting plates as opposed to, um, as opposed to just giving like blank space that you got to screw stuff straight. Yeah. This is just, you don't have to screw stuff into the boat here. So I like that too. And, uh, old town did that on one of their older models way back in the day. They just put those plates all the way down the gunnels. And I, I always thought that was a good idea. So yeah, it's I, a lot of flex good, good flexibility for, you yeah. know, for stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. It really gives the angler or the user the ability to kind of do with that section, whatever they want. Cause if you want to put more tracks on it, you can, mm -hmm. um, because I'm automatically thinking it's like, Oh, that'd be a really good place to mount a fish finder to the side instead of, right in front now typically i like it right in front but this kind of gets it out of the way a little bit so that would you know i mean my my wheels are turning because it, it gives like you said the ability to do whatever you wanted yeah um which is nice so and then adding that like you said earlier that center area mm -hmm. like accessibility to the hull i love that because as someone who me and Brad were in my garage running wires in my RS when I put my XI3 on That was a pain it. in the butt. <laughs> I'm holding it up like this, just shaking it. And he's in the back like, I can see it. It's stuck. Keep going. And I'm just doing this. I'm like, oh, my gosh, sucks. <laughs> like, one, so one, that. one day you think we'd, we'd figure that out, right? So yeah. <laughs> That's well, funny. And the plus of this is if it, it – you, I can already tell you you're going to get great feedback from that feature having center accessibility. So I can just see it any other model that comes down the road. I can see it being a thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's another one of those things that is, it's good to have uh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> so moving back, we'll get to the stern. So I see there's two, obviously pretty standard for most boats. You have two uh, inlaid Flush rod mount. holders yep. yeah flush mounts flush mount rod holders um now are these back here i just want to hit on it are these spaces for tracks or are there already tracks yeah so installed? yeah so those are um a couple things the flush mounts uh, i showed this photo as a uh, sort of a rigged boat so so you could see like what we uh what could be done with it the boat won't come with flush mounts Okay. Uh, and so a lot of people don't like flush mounts anymore. They've yeah, like, it's become kind of a thing like, Hey, you know, so this boat will have the, it has the option. There's actually on the, the surface that the flush mount that you see the flush mount on. And then you, there's another surface. There are two different angled surfaces. So you can, you could put a flush mount mm. and change that angle slightly. One's a little bit tilt more tilted back. Mm -hmm. And so those are tilted backwards so that if you put a flush mount on it, you're going to have the rod, you know, angled back nicely. So you have that. Another thing for river fishing is just, you know, getting your rods angled back if they are in a, in yeah. a rod holder so that they don't mm -hmm. get caught on trees. So there, there are basically two or four surfaces there that you could add flush mounts if you wanted to. Um, and then the track that you see, that track is a sidekick rated track uh, okay. that's gonna come, and that's going to come on the boat. Uh, so this will be sidekick capable. Um, that's awesome. just answered my next question. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be really nice. Um, you know, I don't know if, I don't know how often you may want to, to have a sidekick on this boat. 
uh, because it's, you know, it's not up in that size range of some of the boats that really need them. Yeah. But it's the option to have it and the track is usable for everything. So, you know, whether you use a sidekick or not, it's, it's there and you could, you can decide to use it. So it's going to be nice to have. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I like that. Um, be, we're real quick. I got a story. Me and Justin was at the river last week. Neither one of us have sidekicks on our kayaks. We were sitting here portaging around a dam. So we had to drag through grass and stuff like that. And a guy was just sitting on the bank. He looks over at Justin. He's like, why don't you just get a cart? <laughs> I was just like, he really say that to you. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have a cart and I use it for, I've used it for the RS. It's like the RS is not a heavy boat. I mean, I've, you can drag that everywhere. I've drugged the P120. So now that sucks because that's a big boat. Yeah. Um, but I, I have a cart for that, which Brad is trying to steal from me every yeah. chance he gets. Um, <laughs> but having side track or sidekick rated tracks is nice. Even if you're not going to use sidekicks because you have the, the uh uh what's the word i'm looking for somebody help me out um confidence you have the confidence in the tracks that you can yeah. put some stuff on that if you wanted to that has even maybe a little bit of weight or anything like that and it's not gonna rip out of the boat so yeah absolutely yeah it's nice to have and you know there might be that one that one expedition that you're going <laughs> you're going to do where you're like i'm going to take the time to put the sidekick on for this one or you know uh, so it, I think it was worth worth doing it for you know for me. I, I think it's going to be be a great one. Now, a question I have because you mentioned it earlier in front of the tank while well, you have the battery compartment. Yeah. Do we know about what size battery that'll be able to hold? That's a good question. Um, I I built it rough so that I could house uh, essentially like a Torquedo, like the 1103 style yeah. Torquedo battery. So if you look at that battery size, um, it probably isn't going to hold like the big, um, you know, the bigger ones, the, the Dakota lithium, like monster battery. Yeah. Um, yep. Nope. That, it, it's not going to hold that. <laughs> but I'm going to just say like, uh, you're on a river. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, I there's, there's no that, But uh you but the torquedo, amp hours. you know, if you put a 403, 1103 on there or some similar, if you're not using a torquedo, if you're using something else, you, you, you'd have a, a decent amount of space there uh, to throw a battery. So something like this might be a little bit better? Uh, maybe, but I don't know. I don't know if that. <laughs> That's a 24 amp hour. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a new port. Oh, so. God. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. That's that may not fit uh, in there, but I don't even remember what um, size this is. You know, there's some stuff that that uh, again, there's a like I'll, I'll let me give my this is my little can I give a quick uh, kayak design speech? This yeah, is my mm -hmm. speech. You you when you ask people what they what they want, they are always like, I want everything, and then I want a kayak that weighs nothing. Yeah, yeah. and it's. <laughs> impossible sort of, like you gotta at some point you gotta like realize that you can't have everything on a boat uh, it's, it's and, funny you say that because uh uh Jimenez from uh air or not airship from feel free we had him and talking about the uh airships yeah. the new inflatable and stuff and he said the same thing he's like yeah people want everything under the sun but then they also want it to weigh 15 pounds like the, yeah the happen so it's funny that you say that because it's, it's it kind of shows more. Hey, we're giving you everything we can, plus making it light, but we can't give you everything in the world and hey, make it light. Trust the professionals; they know what they're doing. Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. I think you know. I think shows like this, like what you guys are doing, are great too because uh, it helps educate uh, potential consumers that like anglers as to what all these details are. You yeah. Know, that, Every surface, there are thousands of surfaces on these boats that have to be designed, and every one of them, every surface has to be is specific for something, and it has to yes. has to be thought through. So, it's exactly why we do this show, man. I mean, I can't speak for Matt, but I'm a real tech, technical nerd when it comes to stuff like this. So I love learning 
everything about these boats. Yeah, it's a- I'm a I'm a fan for for the same reason. I mean, I use it for because people ask me, especially. Like once somebody gets to know me or whatnot and they are they're on Instagram and they especially when they see team bonafide, I start getting blown up with questions about the boats and stuff. So learning about how the boat was designed, like someone's going to ask me more questions about this and having the knowledge from the show. A, I can point them to the show because Mm -hmm. why listen to me when they can listen to you? Because that makes more sense. But worst case, I can't. They have a quick design question. It's like, oh, it doesn't come with flush flush mount rod holders. I really love those. Well. Here's what you can do and, and explain about the different angles and the like four different positions you can put it in. So like, that's, I'm about this stuff. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's, it's really helpful to, to educate through, uh, through a media like this for sure. Um, yeah. well, what do you got, Matt? I know you're about to say something. I got more. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Let's hear it. So, <laughs> So I'm guessing uh, the tie down straps are kind of like the, is it like the P127 with the hooks? Yeah. So those will be Omni hooks. Um, they'll work pretty similar to the to the P127, um, and they, uh, yeah, they'll be pretty similar. And I and I added some additional tie down um, hardware at the back of the boat again, so that mm. when we do an accessory bag. Um, you'll be able to strap uh, dry bags or, or, or bags, whatever you want to the bow and the stern of the boat uh, for those yeah, like those multi-day type back trips. That's where I would, yeah. uh, that's where I would uh, uh, strap down my uh, cooler full of small mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> I have to, I have to drop that little joke every time. Cause Matt's like, dude, shut up. <laughs> I hate it. It makes me mad. Like, I understand. I understand. People were eating them back in the day because people in America in the 1700s ate everything because we didn't have industrialized food. Josh, if you're listening, I know you hate industrialized food, but it is what it is. And that's how we get our food. So you don't need to eat smallmouth anymore. Eat Asian carp. There's a ton of them and they're invasive. Eat those things. Leave smallies alone. I'm, I'm sorry. Let the little green guys go. They get yeah. bigger. You catch them the again. greens and the browns. Let them go. They will yeah. get bigger. They're more fun than one meal. <laughs> um, so the the last thing it's it's just a, rend- or a redefinition, I guess, of the the bow. But on the stern, you have the cutout for the anchor wizard, whatever anchor you decide to go with. Was there any thought of using like a a chain or anything back, like a drag chain or anything? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the so the stern is for drag chain. Um, actually, um, where I didn't do a roller at the back. And the reason is because, um, you know, I, I worry about anchoring from the, from the back, but a drag chain, I think is good. Um, provided that you, you know, you need to make, you need to, you need to make one correctly, but, um, a drag chain will keep you out of, you know, out of as much trouble. But anchoring from the stern of a boat can be really dangerous. So, yeah, uh, as <laughs> you nod, as though, as though you found out, uh, that's that's why I, I mean that's that's why I've got a couple anchors there. I wasn't smart and just did off the bow. I do now, but yeah, it was uh, it was off the stern, and I had a mushroom anchor, thinking it's not going to get stuck on anything. Yeah, oh my jokes gosh. on me. It got stuck on everything. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's how I almost died. So. <laughs> And, and the stern of the boat, if you look at like this, um, here's the, let's see, here's the stern of the boat. The, the stern is designed in this area so that if you were in, in a rapid, the water's going to push up against the boat and see if I can tip. It's going to push the boat, the water under the boat and the bow and the stern goes up. So it's going to give you more buoyancy. That's what I'm trying to oh. say. You have more buoyancy back here. You've got these these drag surfaces, and the boat is going to lift at the back if you get in that situation. If you're if you're the stern of the boat is facing upstream, it's going to give you more buoyancy back there. Very cool. This has been the most informative show, and there's that the we've sketch. done. Let's see, That's so cool. <laughs> okay, sorry. Don't know. There's no sorry. What you should do is every purchase of the RVR, they get a little 3D printed model. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be cool. Like, like I was, I've been thinking the whole time. Case. I was like, 
right when this is over, I'm just going to message and be like, hey, dude, can you do me like a 3D printed model and I'll just pay for shipping and whatever the <laughs> filament costs? <laughs> because that would be sick. Well, this is like, so I'm right now I'm just, this this one, I have these two parts right now. So eventually we'll, you know, we'll grow it and have the rest of the boat and, uh, you know, the full view. But uh, I, I'm, I'm doing this one for myself. So I just have... You know, it sits on my shelf with all my other printed boats. Um, oh, that's so but, awesome. Uh, See, that's the stuff like I, I love talking about this stuff, but I also love little knick knock knacks compared yeah. to what my wife hates, which is why I have a Mandalorian helmet. And I got I also bought a dark saber, which is a lightsaber because <laughs> I'm a nerd uh, <laughs> and I like little knick knacks and stuff. So like, yeah, those boats, that would be awesome because my wife would hate it because it would be in probably our bedroom. Like yeah, a bookshelf that has like a giant M for my name and the the symbol for and and S for my wife Stacy. I just like accidentally break those and put a bunch of boats there. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, I can see it. That's pretty much if you could look around my office. That's pretty much what I have. Is like I have little boats laying laying around here <laughs> and Land Cruiser parts. That's that's my Matt. Maybe, Matt's gonna have. <laughs> Matt's gonna have the little uh, kayak models, and he's gonna put it inside of like a glass bottle. I'm telling oh, you, perfect. like I'm yeah. not joking. If you sold them, if you were like, you know what, the, the, the kayak design game's great, but I need to make a little side hustle. I'd buy every single one you had. <laughs> I'd buy them all. A, like, the, unfortunately, these take so long to print. Like, I have a really nice printer, but it just takes forever. Yeah. But if we could come up with a cheap way to like send these out to our dealers, it would be, you know, a great. Oh, that would be. Tool. That would be awesome. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mark at Loveland Canoe and Kayak, who me and Brad fish with and fish for, he wouldn't have them because I would take them home. They'd be gone. So, <laughs> yeah, I would take them. The first, I'd be like, "Yeah, Mark, I'm just doing a shop visit. See if I can help out." All right, I'm leaving. No, oh, you will. Yep, yeah, I had a backpack and it's full now, and I'm taking them with me. He like, would never notice either. He he where'd wouldn't. those go? I don't know. Yeah, these could uh, be man, like I'm, some bona fide trophies. You know, it's like if yeah, we have a little. That would be sick. Maybe we have a little bona fide tournament, and we can just do some. You know, that'd be cool. I'm so down. Let's I'm so do it. Down. As long as it's not like panfish or something, because David just smack everybody. <laughs> He's been catching so many like crappie and perch and stuff. It's just not. It's not fair. Because I'm catching the, ninety fish a day. My my theory is that. He's fishing in waters where the fish are just, they got to, it's summer. They got to get to it. They got to get it done. The water's warm, warmed up. And yeah. then he's, like, he's like, oh yeah, I just caught a, you know, a couple dozen of, I'm like, I don't catch a couple dozen of anything <laughs> down here. You know? yeah. He's also fishing eerie a lot. Yeah. So like he, I, I get so, so for everyone at home, uh, Dave is the regional team manager the, for he, my area. Yep. Yeah. And the team yeah. manager. Yep. Yeah. And the team manager of Team Bonafide. So I get the joy of seeing all the days I'm at work and he's just slaying fish all the time. Yeah. And he'll go out and he'll be like, yeah, I only got one walleye today, but I got like 60 crappie or 60 perch. I was like, that's that's still a good day. Like, yeah, you caught seven, 61 fish. A good day and a good dinner, you know, fillet up some walleye. You can eat walleye, people. You can eat perch and you can eat crappie. <laughs> Leave yeah. the small mouth alone. <laughs> Leave them for us. Oh, yeah, man. you can eat everything else. I don't care. <laughs> um, but we're starting to wind down. Uh, guys, this was a great episode. I'm not joking. If you made it this far, if you've listened to it, watch the YouTube video because it's I mean, he's got models and it has been the most informative show we've ever had. And I loved it every second of it. So, Hans, thank you for being on. Yeah. Um, anyone you want to shout out or anything like that? I, I, I'll just say shout out to uh, um, fans of Bonafide. Um, look, I, I really, um, I love kayak fishing and, and I really enjoy the design side of it. Um, and I appreciate everyone's feedback. And I just, I really am very, every day I'm really appreciative of how much uh, people have come to, to love this, this brand and, you know, Let's keep going. It, we're having we're having a blast here, and uh, thanks you guys for uh, for supporting as well. Heck yeah! Keep oh, up yeah. the good work. I can I can stay from a personal standpoint. I love the boats. I've got three of them. Uh, big fans of them. Uh, even before I was on the team, loved them. You can't go wrong. 
Um, I'll also say, what was I getting ready to say? See, I went on my little tirade and I forgot. Oh, once it comes out, we definitely have to come, have you come back on, talk about the final touches, the changes, if any were made, things like that. So yeah, everyone cool. keep an eye out for that episode. Um, and I, and I should, uh, real quick, I should probably give a little disclaimer that, um, not that it, it kind of goes without saying, but obviously uh, we pre, we kind of showed this, this boat, it's a, that's a rendering and things do change a little bit as we get into production, yeah. and, you know, so yeah. just keep that in mind uh, as, as you're, you know, we get to production with it. So I had a couple uh, write-in questions from a couple people on Instagram. I forgot to cover this. So my bad uh, colors. Is it this, the bona fide lineup of colors that we'll probably be seeing in the boat? Yeah. So uh, to start out with, we're going to do a, we're going to do the Top Gun gray. Uh, Classic. Great. The, yep. w- which is great for rivers. We're going to do the Venom, which is the bright. That'll be like a, kind of our bright color. And then we're going to do this new uh, steel, like steel blue uh, color that you see the rendering in basically like it's. Oh, uh, see, that's I want that. That's yeah. the one. And so we're going to yeah. do the wood, the wooden looking pads, the sort of brown wood color pads and uh, and that steel blue color. And the seat, um, the seat, I have it pictured in like a kind of that same khaki-ish color it'll probably still be in the uh uh like a gray the sea will be a gray but the the boat will be um will be that brown and tan look as well um and uh what else yeah and i, I you know uh I, yeah that's all i'm gonna say for now Okay. on that on that part of it <laughs> i can i can say and i'm other than just fishing for them and promoting them i'm not affiliated with the design process at all but i can say it's bona fide so i'm sure we'll see some special colors down the road um and then the other thing i don't know if you can answer that i don't know if it's too early do we have a, a idea on a retailer msr msrp price yet um i i do but i hesitate to say just yet so okay. that, I'm going to leave that one for Tyler. Uh, and so that we can, uh, we can make sure we get that right. Um, but I, l- l- let me say this, um, this, I think this is really important for Bonafide is that uh, it's my goal. One of my goals is to try to make really ultimate fishability are the boats, but I don't want to leave people out by overpricing stuff. Right. So that's yeah. part of, part of this boat has been like, Boats are expensive, and 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 I I hate that. Like I I want them to be more affordable, but obviously we have we we're made in the USA. We have to make sure that we're, uh, you know, we're doing the right things. But I, I definitely uh, my goal is to try and keep keep stuff still affordable so that more people can get out and do it. Very that, cool. I I'm all about that answer, and I'm all about waiting. I hate waiting, just like yeah. I'm currently waiting for to try the bona fide rods get on that justin i'm currently waiting on the bags get on that justin uh so and i'll tell you i i was out with uh i was out with tyler uh just about a week and a half ago and i was throwing uh one of the bona fide rods and man so it's just oh yeah so so good i'm pumped it arrives at the try one yeah it'll be good definitely so <laughs> Brad, you want to close us out? Great episode. Keep up the good work, man. Uh, thanks for coming on, uh, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Don't know who we'll have on, but it'll be another fun episode, I'm sure. So have a good one, guys. Always. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode here on Paddle and Finn. Be sure to drop a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or smash that subscribe button on any platform you're listening in on. Be sure to check us out on Waypoint TV, waypointtv.com. Make sure you sign up for the Fantasy Kayak Fishing League at paddleandfin.com forward slash fantasy. You could support this show through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash paddleandfin. Don't forget to check out the website, paddleandfin.com. Catch us on YouTube. If you got a question, comment, or want to see a future guest on the show, be sure to email us at paddleandfin at gmail.com. Shout out to our show supporters, Yak Gadget. 
you can check out all the fine kayak accessories at yakgadget.com. Pelican Professional. For all your cases, coolers, and lighting needs, go to pelican.com. Rocktown Adventures, your Midwest premier paddle sports destination. Go to rocktownadventures.com. Eastport Marina, the beautiful destination on Dale Hollow Lake. If you're looking for lodging, kayaks, kayak accessories, or anything fishing related on the beautiful Dale Hollow Lake, go to eastport.info. Jig Masters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and fill your tackle boxes today.